Hi there, I'm Andrew Fazekas, the Night Sky Guy. Welcome to my broadcast this week. It's January 23rd, 2023. We're here to talk about the night sky this week. I hope you had a great weekend uh, wherever you are. I'm broadcasting from Montreal, Canada, where it's very wintry and cold outside. I'm looking out my window. Everything is covered with... I would say at least uh, about 15 centimeters, about six inches of snow at least and more coming on the way. So I'm not thinking I'm going to be able to do too much sky watching the next couple of days at least. But I hope you have had some clear skies and there's some really interesting things happening in the skies uh, above. Uh, I've got the comments uh, open. Uh, can leave uh, your comments there. I'd love to see where you're watching from, where you're joining me from live. We're broadcasting on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Uh, and if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any of my future broadcasts. So with that said, what is the big news? Of course, we're still talking about and watching the Comet ZTF that is in the news because it is brightening. In fact, it's brightening unexpectedly faster than what uh, what everyone was talking about just uh, last week. If you visit the uh, website spaceweather.com, which I love to take a look at because it really shares things of what, what folks are talking about in terms of the night sky, uh, weather-wise, auroras and comets. And here's a picture of a comet uh, taken from uh, Italy uh, by an amateur there. Uh, shows a little bit of a strange appearance of an anti-tail almost coming, which is just really an optical illusion. It's, a, it's the perspective of the comet and how it is uh, in relation to Earth, where we're watching from. But what's really interesting here on spaceweather.com is the talking about the light curve of the comet. Um, here you can see there's the name uh, C-2022E3, uh, but multiple observers are reporting that there's an increase in the brightness of the comet in the last few days, and it's actually past the threshold for naked eye visibility. You can see here on the right hand of the chart and these numbers here, the, uh, the larger the number, the fainter the object is. This is the magnitude scale that astronomers use to classify the brightness of objects in the sky. And the naked eye limit, sort of like where it has to be, the number has to be smaller, it's really at around 6 to 5.5 magnitude. These are objects like stars, uh, for instance, that are shining at 5.5 to 6 magnitude are theoretically visible to the naked eye uh, from a dark location. So away, away from any city lights, uh, no street lamps, no nothing. It's dark probably, you know, if it's a desert or if it's a mountaintop somewhere that's remote. This is where theoretically with the naked eye, you should be able to see the object if it's glowing at 5.5 to magnitude 6 that's the limit and this comet has now as you can see has kind of reached that limit some of these ob observations these little plus signs that you see here represent individual uh, individuals who are making observations of the comet and they've marked what they feel is the uh, is the um, the brightness of the comet and you can see here that uh, just a few days ago it Many are reporting that it is within the range of naked eye visibility, the comet is. And the predictions are that it will go even higher. But you can see that the prediction called for this brightness to be reached about a week later. So it's brightening faster than we expected. This is really good news for us, guys, because this means that the comet may become visible uh, even in suburban skies uh, faster maybe than what we thought. Uh, here are uh, a gallery of, uh, of what uh, people are, are seeing with regarding to comets. Some of them are really beautiful. You can see this one here uh, taken by an individual named Randy Carter uh, showcasing what it looked like from his vantage point. There's, I don't see any location for this individual, but you can see this was taken by uh, a 10-inch telescope. So this is not something you'd see with the naked eye, but it's an image taken through a telescope 
uh, really beautiful, uh, the comet is. It's glowing a greenish glow thanks to the, um, the gases that it is emitting. Uh, but uh, this comet, I think, will be something that with binoculars we should be able to see. With the naked eye, is it going to be easy for most of you? I doubt it. But you never know. Maybe I'll be wrong. Here's the link to spaceweather.com. You can check it out yourself, read up about it. It's very, very interesting, I think. Um, so Comet ZTF. And where in the sky should we look? Well, let's take a look at the, um, the, uh, the uh, planetarium. Let me just put the name in quickly of the comet. And we're going to pop over to the planetarium now and check it out. So let me just pop this in, the name, and it will generate where the comet is. The comet is here in the sky, invisible in the north. If we kind of go, this is set after sunset, but if we kind of go with where the comet is uh, later in the sky, so this is around 8, 9 o'clock at night. This is where the comet is. You can see it is hanging just off of... Uh, the handle of the Big Dipper. You can see if I zoom out, you can see where the Big Dipper is. And you're looking just scanning with binoculars to the left of the Big Dipper or just above this um, handle, the last star there. And a really good guidepost also is perhaps the, uh, the stars of uh, the Little Dipper. There's the North Star just to give you a perspective. And where the comet is, is right there. And the path of the comet in the sky is also projected here, where its orbit is. Where it is in, in relation to Earth, you can see right here. If we zoom out and we magically look at where the uh, comet is in relation to all the other planets, if I just zoom out here, well, let me just keep zooming out, and you'll start seeing all the orbits of all the individual planets. And you can see that... There's Earth, Mars, Mercury, Venus, the inner solar system. The outer solar system is marked by here's um, Jupiter and Saturn, Uranus and Neptune orbits. But look where it is. It's much closer than some of those planets. There it is. And it's heading to have the closest approach to our planet, the comet, will on February 1st. It will be 0 0.28 astronomical units. That's about, uh, I think it's about uh, 44 million kilometers away. But you can see here right now, the comet um, is above the plane of the solar system. And you can see there's the Earth. I'm just showing you in different perspectives of where this comet is. From above, this is where it looks like. And then from the side, you can see moving it around, showing you the perspective of the comet in relation to our planet. So very, very cool. It's heading for a February 1st uh, uh, closest approach to our planet. That's where it's expected to be at its brightest. And so in the sky, this is where you're looking. We're going to go back. There it is. A great guidepost, again, is the Big Dipper. It's just off the, the, uh, of the Big Dipper. And over the course of the next few days, here you can see the comet moving closer to the Little Dipper. There you can see the Little Dipper right here. So this is January, Friday, by Friday, January 27th. Really making it easier to find the comet is use your binoculars, especially if you have some light pollution. This will help tremendously. Binoculars are going to be key for this. Is find the North Star right in the north, right? And you can use the if you're, if you're not familiar of where the North Star, use the end stars, the end two stars in the bowl of the Big Dipper and just draw an imaginary line out leftward from, to above the, the bowl, right there. This is where the bowl is. It's kind of on its side. So just off, just draw that imaginary line. You'll hit where the North Star is and then trace out with binoculars that Little Dipper, what we call the Little Dipper uh, of the Little Bear right there. There's the bowl of the Little Dipper. And that's where, if you see the end stars of the Little Dipper, and just draw that line just up above it, that's where the comet will be on Friday, January 27th. This is where it'll be January 28th. Again, you can use the, the Little Dipper as a guidepost for finding the comet. Isn't that cool? So this is really going to make it a lot easier, I think, for those of you that are not as familiar with the night sky. It's trying to take these 
celestial signposts that are fairly bright, are visible in the skies of typical suburban skies, of being able to see the North Star is, is a bright naked eye star, uh, the Big Dipper, again, very bright. And these are going to be great guideposts and for you to track down this comet. If you want to see Comet ZTF, this is a great way to do that. So again, this is Saturday evening, okay? Sunday evening, Monday next week, January 30th. And this is January 31st, again, just between the 10 stars of the bowl of the Big Dipper and the North Star, Polaris, right there. Uh, great as a, a, a guidepost in finding where this comet is. And on February 1st, the comet will be, you can see right off, again, off, just off the tip of the Big Dipper here, getting close to another bright star. This one is called Capella, Capella in the constellation Auriga. You can see right there, the herdsman right there, and that is where the comet will be on when it's the brightest. So I'll post these sky charts for you on my timelines of my social media channels, wherever you're watching, and that'll help you. But right now, as we're speaking, uh, on Monday, January 23rd, this is where the comet is. As the sun sets and it gets dark, it's just above the the handle of the Big Dipper, and I'm gonna post a link to that for you guys, so don't miss that. Now, what's interesting, I'm gonna set this at sunset. What else is there other than the comet to see? Well, look at this. This is a beauty. So if you've got clear skies tonight, January 23rd, and it's just after sunset on Monday, today, this is a beautiful sight. Look at that crescent moon joining a very close conjunction. It was actually the closest between Venus and Saturn yesterday, Sunday night, January 22nd. You may have seen it, but tonight it's going to be, they're going to be joined by the thin crescent moon. It's like a whisker thin crescent moon uh, and it's a waxing phase. So we're heading into a full moon uh, in, in next week. But look at how beautiful this, this combination is. Again, looking in the southwestern sky, maybe about 20 minutes, a half hour to 45 minutes after your local sunset, look to the low southwest for this beautiful combination. You don't want to miss it. It's Venus, Saturn, and uh, the moon. And you may ask, why do they look so? Are they that close? No, this is just a, ha a happenstance of how uh, they appear from our vantage point uh, here on Earth. And I'll show you why. Why does Venus and Saturn look so close from our vantage point? If I zoom out of Venus, this is the orbital view of the solar system. And this is going to explain why it does look like the way it does. Watch this. So here's the sun. There you can see Venus and Saturn above. I'm just going to zoom out so you can see it better. There is Saturn. There is Venus. There is the sun. And look where the Earth is. So imagine from our vantage point, right? The sun is over here, very just below the horizon, it was, has, has set, but there is Venus and there is Saturn. You can see they are widely apart. They're separated by literally hundreds of millions of kilometers, but yet they look in our skies tonight very, very close. And that's because you can see that lineup it just happens to be that way. Again, if I just switch back to the sky view, there you go. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? So, and that's the orbital view of, of, of Venus, by the way, around the sun. That's about as far away as Venus will go in our skies. That's why you never see Venus in the eastern sky um, after sunset, right? Very far away. It never travels far away from the sun. That's, of course, because Venus is the second closest planet to our sun. So that's the, uh, uh, the view tonight. But if we move forward in time... This is January 24th, January 25th, the moon is going to be joining Jupiter. I'm going to just put this a little bit later, an hour after sunset. Look at how beautiful this is on Wednesday. Wednesday, June 25th, uh, you will see the moon and Jupiter close together. Absolutely gorgeous in the constellation Pisces. You can see one of the fishes there, Pisces. Um, just a gorgeous 
a great photo opportunity too with your smartphone. But I wanted to also notice something. I, I skipped over something because this is really a much more challenging planet. It's Neptune. See that? Neptune and the moon are, are, are close there. If I go back to Tuesday, it'll be on the other side of Neptune. So 24th of January, the moon and Neptune are, are, one, are, are like that. By Wednesday, Neptune will be on the uh, other side of the moon. The moon will have switched over and it's very close to Jupiter. Again, looking in the southwest after sunset, an hour or two, as the skies darken, it gets even more dramatic, that view between Jupiter and the moon. Look at that. And the pair are very close together. If you kind of zoom in like that through binoculars, this is what you'll see. Isn't that gorgeous? I think that's really worth uh, a view, uh, a nice view. Um, highly recommend it. Again, this is Wednesday, January 25th. If we keep moving uh, later into the week, this is uh, Thursday. Friday, Saturday, really interesting. The moon is going to be snuggled up to the planet Uranus, the green giant. Uranus and the moon will be close together, close enough that it'll make a perfect pairing in binoculars. So find the moon. Again, this is Saturday, January 28th. Mark that down on your calendar. In the evening, let the skies darken later at night, so it's as dark as possible, find that moon, use your binoculars, and look for a green colored dot next to the moon. It's the only one that'll be there on the darker side. You can see how you see the darker side, so may, you'll be looking on the darker side of the moon. And this is visible wherever you are around the world. And this is a challenge I pose for you. Can you find the planet Uranus with your binoculars? It'll be a fantastic view, of course, um, that pairing uh, is an optical illusion. The moon is going to be some 400,000 kilometers away from us, while Uranus is a whopping 2.9 billion kilometers away. So far away, it takes nearly an, uh, two and a half hours for the light from Uranus to reach your eye. When you're looking with binoculars, think about it. You're looking back in time, two and a half hours back in time. That's how long the light from Uranus has reached your eye. And remember, remember, sorry about that folks, we got disconnected my internet for some reason, but we're back here and we were looking, we were talking about Uranus and the moon uh, together on Saturday, January 28th. Uranus is lit up. Remember what I've, what, what you need to remember is that Uranus is not a star. It doesn't shine by its own light. It's sunlight reflecting off the cloud tops of Uranus, it's really incredible. Look at that. I mean, uh, just to think about that, you're seeing reflected sunlight off of a world that is 2.9 billion kilometers away. There you can see some of the moons of, uh, of Uranus. It has five main moons. It even has a, 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 a set of ringlets that surround it, uh, smoke-sized particles that make up the rings. Of, of Uranus mostly, really impressive stuff. And it's just incredible that with just an average pair of binoculars on Saturday night, you can track down Uranus next to the moon. Of course, there'll be the glare of the moon, but that will still be very, very tight. And uh, Nancy's asking, what type of binoculars do you re recommend? Any type of binoculars, really. The larger the pair, the more easily it'll be uh, seen. Um, seven by 50 pair is great. That's a standard pair of binoculars. Uh, but really, try it. With a pair of binoculars, it'll enhance your vision. And any pair will really help bring that planet, Uranus's green dot, into view. So I want you to try to, 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 to do that. Um, it'll really be impressive, I think, for you to think of what you're looking at is a planet so distant, 2.9 billion kilometers away. Now, if we keep following the, the moon on Sunday, the moon will be closer to an orangey bright star, and that's planet Mars in the constellation Taurus the Bull. Again, this is Sunday night, January 20, uh, 29th. And uh, something in the morning skies to finish off is planet Mercury. In the southeastern sky, planet Mercury is at its best morning show of the entire year. And uh, you can see it as a faint 
little dot in the skies uh early morning best way to see it is finding a spot that you have a clear view to the low southeastern sky uh about half hour before your local sunrise, maybe 45 minutes before your local sun sunrise, use binoculars to spot it. It'll look like a faint star in that glow of uh, the morning dawn. And that is planet Mercury. Never travels far away from the sun, therefore it's always a challenge, but it's at its best morning appearance. Uh, this is gonna be on Monday, January 30th. Uh, and I know I broadcast on Mondays, but this is in the morning, so it'll be before my broadcast. And I want to end this week's broadcast with, with this beautiful observing event of catching Mercury, the most elusive naked eye planet, uh, very close to the sun. But it's something that's visible in the southeast skies the best on Monday, January 30th. How's that, guys? Lots of things in the skies this week. Thank you so much for joining me. If you are interested in astronomy, I invite you to check out my, my, uh, my book, uh, The Backyard Guide to the Night Sky. I have actually copies of this that uh, I have on my website. You can find it here. I'm going to put a link in here uh, in the comments. If you're interested in purchasing a signed, personally signed edition, I have them for sale here. You can read about what the book contains there as well. Some sample pages too. It's a great pocket guide out by National Geographic, of course. I also have my Atlas, Stargazer's Atlas. It's a big giant coffee table book. Uh, you'll find a link on my website as well for this book I, uh, for signed copies if you're interested in that as well. So all kinds of neat things uh, out there. You can see there's my website with my uh, book. Uh, and if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, make sure you subscribe to my channels, whether it's YouTube, Facebook, or Twitter that you're watching. I appreciate your uh, appearance, and I love to see your comments always uh, on each of my broadcasts. Thanks so much. I hope to see you all next week. Until then, I wish all of you clear skies. Bye-bye.